there you go. So I have a lot of really fond memories of visiting San Francisco while growing up. Chinatown being one of the most profound memories. I got to visit Chinatown again this last summer. I remember when I was in I think third or fourth grade, uh, they did a GT field trip. We went to San Francisco. At one point during the trip, me and my dad snuck away and went to Chinatown and walked around on our own. We found one of those wonderful Chinese bakeries that has the steamed pork buns, thus started my lifelong love affair with steamed pork buns. So when I was asked to do this diorama, I was beyond thrilled to be able to take on the responsibility to do that. I knew I had to incorporate something very culturally relevant to, to the Chinese culture as much as I could, and I thought lanterns could embody that. Just, just the simple shape and the colors of red and yellow, that would be instantly recognizable. Before I even planned out the diorama, I took time to figure out how to make these lanterns because I didn't want to spend all this time building the diorama and then get to the end and realize I had no idea how to make the lanterns or not do that and have it feel incomplete. So I actually started with figuring out how to make these lanterns and then I kind of designed the diorama with the idea to incorporate the little sways and swoops of lanterns uh, into the diorama so that it would be one of the main features. This is part of the way through the process of me making miniature Chinese lanterns. I'm gonna show you how I do it. It involves papier mache and glue and water and balloons and some thick uh, cordage or string. So I bought a package of balloons, uh, balloons <laughs> off of Amazon. These are just water balloon balloons. I intentionally wanted them small because what I do with them is I blow them up to the size that I would like to make my lanterns at and then I clamp them with a hemostat. All right, obviously you could make them any size you want, but I'm going for this size that's around an inch. I'm going for this size, it's around an inch and a half in diameter. So I simply blow it up and let the air out until it gets to right where I want it. And I twist it like this. And then I take some hemostats, right? This is what doctors use to perform surgery and miniature artists like me use to hold little tiny things that they can't hold with their big fat hands. Go ahead and clamp the balloon, right? Some of these balloons, when you blow them up, they become egg-shaped, so you just have to pay attention. I usually just don't use those. I set those aside to make water balloons out of for a future time. This is also extremely fun to play with. Once it's clamped, you can go ahead and tie your knot. Trying to tie the knot with it not clamped, not, not clamped, is uh, kind of difficult. So I found the clamping with the hemostat very, very helpful. There you go. So I do not unclamp it at this point. I leave it clamped so the air stays in this nice, uh, mostly spherical pocket. I use some cordage. This is just kind of like the cotton cordage. It's not meant to be anything special. You could really use anything that you're comfortable with that can soak up glue, anything that's fibrous, that's not going to expand. Like twine and hemp will expand, but this strong like linen cordage or cotton cordage does really well. You can also use this type of cord. This is for needlepoint. This works well too. I'm just using this because I like the black color coming through on the paper mache that we do. For this size, I cut about eight inches off. It's going to be too much, but that's intentional because I found it's hard to add to this process. So I better go long and then just trim off the excess. So here is my balloon on my hemostat. And this is just a little cheapo dollar store Tupperware container that I put about half glue and half water in. So we're gonna just go ahead and drop the linen cord in there and get the thing mostly soaked. You're gonna have to get your fingers a little dirty doing it this way. I'm using a little helping hand here clamp uh, to hold my hemostats on my balloon here. So after soaking the string, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of roll the balloon around in the glue mixture. Uh, you could do this in a deeper, a deeper cup if you wanted to, to dip the balloon fully. Try not to get glue on your hemostats because then you just have to clean it off later. And you just need to cover uh, all the balloon. You don't have to go right into the clamp because you'll see later on that part is going to get trimmed. So you just want to cover the balloon so that the cordage will stick to it. Uh, I find it pretty easy to just flop it over the balloon like this. And then you're going to guide it around the balloon. This takes a lot of finagling and actually can get really frustrating if you use too much water in your glue, this thing will slide around like crazy. If you don't use enough water, uh, it will not let it be floppy enough uh, to sit on the balloon. I just had to use my brush to encourage that to sit on the balloon, as you just saw. So this is a fluid process, pun intended. 
Got some black paint on my hand. It's gonna take some practice. It took me about four or five balloons to really kind of get a feel for it. So I get them on here like this. As you can see, I'm just spiraling it around. And you can see it's uneven, that's okay. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start uh, at the top here and then just re reorganize it. And what I'll do is I'll use my fingers and just kind of stabilize it so it's not bouncing around like crazy and just use my fingers. It seems to be the best tool for the job. It's hard to get perfect. I've only done a couple of these where I would say that they're perfect, but really as a miniature um, and what these are gonna be used for, having a little bit of a natural look to them, meaning they're not perfectly perfect is fine. And then once you get it to where it's gonna be about like that, this, this curl could be a little tighter on the bottom, but once it's about like that, you just wanna clamp this somewhere so it can dry. If you're in a warm environment or a warm dry environment, a couple hours is fine before you move on to the next step. If you're in a cold or a cold and wet environment, it might be worth leaving these like around all day or even doing this at night and then coming back to them in the morning just so that you don't re-wet this string and move it around. And you'll see what I mean when I get to that step. This diorama that I made and these Chinese lanterns that you're seeing me make here, I've operated mostly off of memory. This is actually a commission request I built for somebody who lives in New York, near Chinatown in New York. So this is meant to emulate Chinatown of New York, but of course, they're going to have similar vibes. I'm very, very appreciative for those memories and access to that uh, that culture because I've always had a fondness for design and architecture. And I think visiting Chinatown was, did inspire some things that I like growing up. There's a really cool brutalist building uh, in Chinatown in San Francisco. And I love that building. It looks like something out of a sci-fi futuristic movie. It's funny too, because when I was making this diorama, I decided to minimalize the classic red brick and paint it over with a bright, uh, you know, baby sky blue color. And then I did the noodle shop restaurant in white, yellow, and red subway tile with uh, the red overhang with the tile roof. And when I showed that to Mrs. Oler's workshop, she was like, that doesn't look like Chinatown. And I'm like, have you been to Chinatown recently? And she's all like, well, no. And when I, we went to Chinatown this last summer, I actually found a building that I think probably inspired those color choices when I was a kid that's been there for decades. It had that exact color scheme on it. And I didn't even, I didn't even use that for reference. So I think, uh, some part of my subconscious that must have been burned into my memory and I ended up choosing those exact colors because of it because I didn't even look at I didn't look at any reference for that I just kind of went off what felt right to me and I ended up emulating the colors of that building almost perfectly modern art <laughs> I wanted to show you guys too I've tried a few other methods here where I tried these on a larger balloon here without doing this spiral to see if I could do the spiral after. And just because of the way that the gluing process worked, it didn't really provide a surface that made sense to do that with. But you can see as we do this paper mache process that you can get light through and it has a nice effect. So this is a process you can also personalize to do whatever color you want, do whatever combination. I use some uh, gold Sharpie on one of these and also some gold paint just to em emulate some of the uh, Chinese characters. This is, I just made this shape up. It doesn't mean anything, at least I think. I just wanted to kind of see if I could make it look okay if I chose to write Chinese characters on these. And then I'll show you how to do this little insert here to hang it. So we have our messy lineup in order of dryingness. This one I think is cured enough to where we can start doing the paper mache. And really all we're doing in this paper mache process is taking various colors, whatever colors we want of tissue paper and slicing it into strips and then slicing it into little rectangles. I did a lot of experimentation with this where I did long strips, little square pieces, but these sort of rectangular pieces seem to work the best at this side. So the most tedious part of the process here I've already started, as you can see, once this uh, glue is dry enough on here, you can basically, you're gonna have to take tweezers, it seems to be the best way to do it, and then dip it in the glue and water mixture and then spread it onto the piece. It seems like it's gonna take forever, but it's actually a pretty quick process at this scale with this size. I'm sure if you did this at a larger scale, you could do larger pieces and it should scale up the amount of time it takes you. But really it's just a matter of working through it. And then every time I get a little area done, I will take my brush and some glue water and spread it on just so that everything gets impregnated properly with enough glue so that it will dry nice and stiff when we remove the balloon later. All right, so this baby's got a good first coat. 
I will probably wait here to see how this looks as it starts to cure and dry. And then uh, when it's mostly dry, I may come in and add a second coat. And by the way, once you do this process, it is going to need to dry overnight to fully cure. And a lot of these big ripples and stuff will shrink up. So it just depends on how much water you added or how much glue you did or didn't add, how hot it is at the day. You're just going to have to experiment a little bit. There is no perfect formula. You could spray this with alcohol to try to speed up the process and thin the glue. Um, there's a lot of different things you could do to mess with this depending on your weather in your area and how much time you have. So please experiment and just take this video as essentially an outline for how to do this, not hard and fast rules. The yellow is a lot thinner. As you can see, there's a lot of blue coming through there from the balloon. We want to get to the point where most of it looks more like this denser area right here where there's really no blue coming through. And then uh, when we pop the balloon and extract it, uh, it will look more like this when we're done. Another thing that uh, we came across in the gift shops is, of course, those Chinese masks. And I flipped out. I forgot exactly how old I was. I was probably 10 or 11 or something like that. We bought like three of those masks. And as soon as we went home, I forced my friends to reenact scenes from the movie Three Ninjas with me because I was obsessed with that movie and found out that they sold those in Chinatown. I was like, I'm in heaven. You could probably consider that amongst my first uh, cosplays. And it's pretty well burned into my memory. Okay, for this next step, we're gonna need some jeweler's pliers. That's pliers that have these conical shape here to the tips and some wire cutters. But this is to make the apparatus to hang the miniature lantern from that goes inside. It's just made from bent wire that's looped around so that I can tie it in place or slide it onto a string or wire or however we're going to be hanging our little lantern here. This is just basic craft wire that's thin and steel. Um, we're just gonna cut off a piece that's like, you know, two or three inches. I'm just going to grip it with my pliers, bend it down and hold it tight up against there so it makes a loop and then twist it around once. And then there is our little loop. And then we can take the rest of this and kind of curl it into the shape of a circle. We don't want to go all the way though and I'm going to trim it off and we just want it so that when we put it inside of the lantern it will hold itself inside the lantern and hold the lantern aloft like that. Ta -da! Then we can slide it onto a piece of string, wire, a fishing line, whatever we're wanting to use to hang our lanterns and it will hang around and dangle just like a regular lantern. Ta-da! And just to prove that you don't have to use jeweler's pliers if you don't want to get them, this is just a wooden skewer. I'm just going to wrap it around in the same manner. Maybe a little bit harder to get the twist done, but it worked out. And holding it in place while you do the curl is a little bit harder, but as you can see, you can get a perfectly usable piece. But my OCD is killing me, and I would like that loop to be a little bit more round, so I'm going to use my jeweler's pliers to get it a little bit more spherical, like that. It has been 24 hours, and my balloons are hard. Sounds really weird. So... For de-ballooning these, the most efficient way I've found is to take a sharp object, be careful everybody, like a utility knife, and you're going to poke the balloon up here in the latex area and get a little slit in the balloon. Make sure you actually have a hole in it. What do we do? Make sure it's got some weight to it. And then, surprisingly enough, to extract the balloon, all you have to do is keep tension on it. So what I mean is I'm going to hold this. This actually shrunk a lot more than I meant for it to, but that's okay. Uh, they're all going to be a little bit unique. So if you don't like them, you can try again. That's why it's good to do a big batch of them. So you can kind of pick and choose which ones you want to use for what application. But in this case, we have popped this balloon here with that little tiny hole you can see in the rubber. And all I'm going to do is hold the shape of this like this. I'm not going to put my fingers back here or I'll squeeze. I'm just going to hold this. And I'm going to pull on the balloon and keep pressure. And you'll begin to hear the balloon just pull itself away from the inside. They will separate. So just watch. 
That one happened really quick. And then I just take some scissors, you can use smaller ones if you like, and trim a hole that is the size to my liking by just kind of going around in a circle. Like that. And then we slip them into our little pre-made retainers here, like so. And there we go. There you go. And that's actually got a pretty nice hole here at the top. I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit. I'm not gonna mess with that one too much. That's pretty nice looking. And then we're gonna go over here and it looks like I needed one more yellow one, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and put this where the little dingly dangly belongs above our key shop. And there is our hanging lanterns in Chinatown. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Not only is there this tutorial, it's one of the skill sets that I used to build this Chinatown diorama. I also have the how to make a miniature fire escape tutorial, which was the one that I put in this diorama. How to do the miniature roll up doors tutorial, which I put in this diorama. And how to make this key shop, which is a proximity piece or basically a separate piece that the commissioner can put inside the diorama or have on a shelf as a display piece. If you'd like to learn how to make this key shop, this was a video I did exclusively for my channel members in the workshop masters tier. That was a special video I gave them a few months back uh, as my thank you for their support. So if you'd like to see how to do this in full detail all the way, check out the channel members only section, specifically the workshop masters level. Thank you for watching.